Welcome to Talking Halos post opening day edition. That's right. Post opening day edition. Here we are. Yay. Angels lose 11 3. Brutal. Brutal. But nonetheless, we are here to cover it with Derek C. Paul, myself. That's Jared Timms and Nate Green. Negative Nate. You have right to be negative, Nate, today. It was ugly. But. Maybe there's some silver linings there. First thoughts going to Jared. How you doing, man? I am doing great. Baseball's back. Um, Salt Lake gets rained out opening night. But other than that, baseball's back. Angels suck, kind of. But, yeah, we're good. Lots of way to announce your first game of the season. They suck. That's going to keep those listeners just pouring in for this let's, year. Let's be fair. They, they, they did <sighs> suck on opening night. Will they continue to suck? I don't know. But. We'll see. I mean, it was bad against a very good Baltimore team, a team that was fired up their new with their new ace, Corbin Burns. <sighs> Nate Green, Nate, doing good. Baseball's back. It's exciting. It's it's uh it's fun time. That's it. Nothing yeah, else. I mean, there, there's, no there's, nothing, there, there's nothing else to say. Nothing else to say. No. All right. Well, talking about this game. Uh, three things I took from it, three things you guys took from it as well, three things I took from it. One, Patrick Sandoval had no business, in my view, being the opening day starter. That you used to be traditionally the guy who's your ace, kind of like what they – or was it with Corbin Burns? They threw the race out there right away, and he set the tone. But he doesn't look good. Corbin Sandoval Burns? Look Corbin good. Burns? Oh, Sandoval. No. Who, who would you have Sandoval. given it to, though? I, I want to know who you would have given it to. Who I would have given it to? Yeah. There's, I only think there's one right answer. If it's not Patrick Sandoval, I think there's really only one right answer. And Jared's not go. going to give it. I will go with Detmers, but okay, Jared, Tyler Anderson. It would have to, to be fair, and this is not actually a joke. I I probably would have given it to Tyler Anderson. You're going in against a you're going in against a good team. You know you're facing. You never want to like try to match up in baseball. I don't think until you're into the playoffs, like because this game this season's so long, you can't match up. But Let's be fair. You're going. You're, you're going into opening day in Baltimore against Corbin Burns. You you know he's probably going to pitch well. Just let Tyler Anderson throw. He's got the veteran experience. Like none of these other guys have ever. Op- have any of these other guys even had an opening day start? I mean, but hold on. Has Tyler Anderson? No, but he's at least veteran presence that's been better experience. Playoffs. Sandoval's been in the league for years now. At this point, he's no. He's not some rookie. I, I mean, opening day is a little bit of a different beast. It's like pitching the postseason at that point. I mean, granted, you can yeah, say but you ju- you just said Tyler Anderson hasn't done it before. So what does it matter if he hasn't done it before? It's the same as Patrick Sandoval making his first career opening day start. All right, Nate, who's your guy? Who, who, I, I give it to Chase Silseth. Chase Silseth is is the guy with the best stuff on the team. It's not close. Um, that's the guy who needs to start opening day. He's not. He's not a veteran. I, I, I'm not on the veteran train. That was Jared, but <laughs> I, I'm on who has the best stuff should start the first game. I, you make a good point, and I, and I need to go back and think about that because the guy I imagine having the best stuff is Detmers, but he's never really proven. At least Chase Silsa has been proving it in the last year when he's healthy, how good he can be. So that makes sense completely, and I'm and I'm really hoping to see um, what these other stars can do because I, I, I'm convinced at this point uh, – Guys like Sandoval aren't the answer. I used to think I used to be a lot higher on Sandoval. I don't know what's happening with this guy, but he looks so unhappy at the mound half the time. Well, they don't play good defense behind him, and it's pretty obvious why he uh, he's pretty bad with throwing strikes, and he's pretty bad with tempo. And when you're when you're a defender, you want good tempo and you want strikes because you don't want to be on the field for 35 minutes an inning. So you got to be getting ahead in the count. You got to throw strikes, and you got to have good tempo. Uh, there were a couple times yesterday where he was waiting until literally one second to throw the pitch on the pitch clock. And it's like that, that all that stuff, it, it just adds up though. The longer they're, they're sitting out there, the longer they're going to be on their heels, the, the more defense is going to be a problem, the more he's going to pout. I mean, it's the same cycle and it, it, it really needs to, I, I don't understand why they haven't fixed that because that, that is the most obvious thing that I've cried about with, with Patrick Sandoval is the pouting but it's the tempo. It, it's unacceptable, that bad tempo, especially with the pitch clock. Yeah, I think Ronald Washington's gonna, not going to put that all year. 
He's not, not that kind of manager. Not. Anyways, um, other stuff, Mike Trout. He's still Mike Trout. On pace for 162 home runs. Still Mike Trout. Um, here's a question. What do you put the odds that he stays healthy all year? What, what What's your game number? Because obviously all year, like, I mean, there's only a handful of guys that play 162 games. So, like, are you saying he plays 140 plus games? What are the odds on that? Or is it? Yeah, let's, let's go 140 plus. What are the odds? I, I put it at 30 percent. 30 percent. I was gonna go a little higher and say 40, but 140 games is not. I, how many? I'd be interested to know how many guys. And I know I'm going up here a little bit. How many guys last year played over 150 games? Can't be very almost. Many. You had a, you had a bunch of Braves plus Freddie Freeman, so yeah. So there were there weren't very many though that play that many games during the season. I mean, it's pretty. It's kind of tough to stay healthy and play 100 and even 45 plus games. 140, yeah, I'd say that's one IL stint plus days off. Yeah, that that sounds, you know, 40 percent chance, 30 percent chance. I'm going 50 percent. So 140, Jared, was that your your number you wanted to know? 150, but I mean 140. I think there's going to be a lot more at 140 games. I had 96 guys play 140 games last okay. year, and 50, 150. You're looking at 55 guys playing at least 150 games. So that's a that's a pretty good number, actually. I mean, what that's almost to a team. So, yeah, that's pretty good. And then for 140, it's what three three guys a team basically. Plus, I mean, mm-hmm. take away the Braves, I guess, because. I don't know if anybody played 140 games for the Angels last year. Did mm. anyone? My gosh. Did they? I just think everybody's hurt. <laughs> Neto, no. Ohapi, no. Shohei might have. Rendon, no. Shohei? No. Uh, Shohei, Shohei missed the last crazy. month. It's, it's close. Close. Let's say he played um, like 135 games. I don't know if anybody played over 140 games for the Angels last year. I wonder when, so Shohei played 160 last the year before that, and then I think what twenty one he played. Yeah, so I mean, it doesn't happen. I'm just saying, it doesn't happen very often. Too many guys. I mean, you get two, three guys that do it on a team. I mean, Renfro yeah. played 140. I know that doesn't count, but he did play 140. Oh, wait, let him go. Though, so. Otani played 135. So yeah, you're you're looking at not too many Angels were playing 140. Hmm. Ren Gifo was 126. I think that was the third most by an Angel last year. So, yeah, it, it doesn't happen very often. Um, is it possible that Wash put them in a better position by by starting spring training a little bit earlier, probably putting them in a little bit better shape to to be able to play every day? It's it's possible. Um, you're a little bit younger this year as well. Not as many old guys playing. You're starting the year with the young guys. Yeah, the young guys played a lot last year, but it, it was a month or two, three, four months in before they really started to play every day. So I I think that's a big advantage to playing every day is being young and, and being able to do it every day. But um, so I do think you'll see more angels do it. Do I see Mike Trout doing it? Uh, I mean, that's what that's one injury and, and he's out, you know, 15, 10, 15, 20 games. And, and there he is. He's going to miss the 140 mark. So I, I don't know. I think he's due for a healthy season. <laughs> Just saying, I mean, you hope. He's due. You, hope. you hope he's due. I'm going to shoot that shot and give 50%. Why not? No. That's fine. I, I mean, I hope I hope that's what it is. I'm thinking, you know, just by from DH here and there. So I'm just giving him some rest for being in the field that helps preserve him some. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, anything else about the game? I mean, when you lose 11-3 opening day, there's not a whole lot you can really say. You're not you. You can't evaluate a whole lot with players yet. You need the whole series, so we'll we'll definitely have more to I, say come Sunday evening. But was there anything about the game that kind of stood out to you guys? So two two things for me. One, the uh, the prize bullpen was not very good. Um, I know we only used one guy that was signed this offseason. And only signed to well, I guess two guys signed this offseason. One of them signed to one million dollars and. He was not very good. Um, Angels used most of their money on on bullpen this year, and the bullpen was not good at all. So I that's one. Hey, it. one game is one game. I know, I know. But if if you're getting paid, if we're gonna pay relievers, you better be good early. 
right? Because you're not going to get better as the season goes along because the more wear and tear, the more you're not going to be ready to pitch all the time. So I think that's something to be looking at early. How good do these prize possessions that we paid for pitch well? I mean, you already have Stevenson on the on the IL. You've got Moore who's paid. You've got Cisneros who was paid. Um Estevis was paid last year. You've you've got a lot of guys that have been paid. So this bullpen better be one of the better bullpens in, in Major League Baseball is what I'm going to say. The other thing that I was a little um, confused on is Miguel Sano starting at DH. I, it makes absolutely no sense to me. Right on right, um, one of the better right-handed pitchers in the American League, if not the best healthy pitcher in the American League, because Garrett Cole is going to be out for at least uh, two months being put on the 60-day IL two days ago. Um, why, why Miguel Sano there? Uh, you had Mickey Moniak, Aaron Hicks could have DH, Mickey Moniak could have DH. There were Luis Rangifo could have DH, or Drury could have DH. Like, there were a lot of different options there. And I know Miguel Sano is that cool story that everyone's super excited about. He hit a couple homers in spring training, he also hit about a buck 80 in spring training. So it's not like he was tearing the cover off the ball. And you're looking at a guy who was Mickey Moniak, who hit 280 last year, really came on strong for the Angels. And he doesn't get a start on opening day against a right-handed pitcher with, yeah, he's got a good cutter, but really, are are we are we that convinced that Miguel Sano is the answer? I mean, he's 30, 32 years old. He he hasn't played in the major leagues in two years, and the last time he played in the major leagues, he had a buck sixty. So, I I didn't understand it. I I think that's going to be something to monitor as well as how many at bats are we giving him because. That dude, that dude signed a minor league deal off the streets, and we were the only ones really in on him. So maybe there was one or two other teams, but how many other teams are going to say you're the starting DH on opening day and you're going to play, you know, thirty of the next forty games, which would be crazy to me. Derek, yeah, I mean, I mean, tonight's point to the bullpen. It's hard when you're coming into a seven-one game. Um, I mean, you want to. The bullpen tracks. made seven-one. I mean, Sandoval made it seven. Sandoval's the one that made it seven one. I mean, you got to, yeah, you got to start better than that. Um, but yes, I do agree. You got to come in. Zuniga looked good. Simber looked good. There's, there's two of your acquisitions there. The only one that didn't look good was Cisnero. Um, and then um, you, you put all your money into Jose your boy Suarez. Jose Suarez too. Don't no, forget Jose Suarez. You put all your money into Jose Suarez. I wasn't putting anything. Don't into forget that. Jose Suarez pitched and he was, yeah, he was what. Whatever. All right. Take, I, whatever, take whatever you want away from for, one, for the one record. Game. For the record, one game. And, and by the way, that one team, that one game though is is a favorite to at least win the AL East, if not win the whole thing this year, Baltimore. And they're in their home own, home opener with their newly acquired ace. Uh I I would probably chalk it this up to it was probably bound to happen. By the way, Starts you guys are talking about games, right? You're talking about I, did, I don't know if you caught in the broadcast the focus they had on on Cal Ripken Jr. Mm-hmm. And I was just blown away at the conversation we just had where no one in the Angels were really is playing more than 135 games last year. This guy played 200, sorry, two oh, 2000, you know, broke the record, 2632, played some more, and ended up, you know, breaking Lou Gehrig's re- record overall. And you're going to be thinking, man, we can't even do that today. No one's going to do that. I don't think that, I don't think that record will ever be broken. No. That's, and the funny thing is with all the technology and things to, to allow guys to recover faster, we, we are more concerned about making sure these guys are healthy by giving them off days and stuff like that than letting them play every day. So yeah, I don't think that record will ever be broken. I think, um, Marcus Simeon might be the the leader in games played, and he might he might be at like two hundred and something. Like it, it's not a big number for uh, consecutive games played right now. All right, match up, t- match up tomorrow for game two: Griffin Canning versus Grayson Rodriguez. I'm interested in, in seeing Canning. His his pitching this spring training was interesting. Grayson Rodriguez is supposed to be the second coming of Christ. Um, I'm interested in seeing Grayson Rodriguez, to be honest. Yeah, That's a he came name. on late last year too. Um, so I'm looking forward to that matchup overall. It's a four o'clock game Eastern time, one o'clock Pacific. Uh, what are you guys looking for tomorrow? Better defense, better tempo from the starting pitching. Not better defense. Actually, it, it starts on the mound. Better, better tempo from the starting pitching. More strikes. 
um, get your defense involved early. You don't got to strike everybody out in Canning. I think in Canning knows that. Um, so I think if, if, you know, you're able to put bat on ball, um, and, and that's not a, that's not a small field there in Baltimore anymore. They've moved the field. They move the fences back for a reason. Don't be afraid to, you know, give up a fly ball or two, um, going into, it. I know it's a good offense, but you got to rely on your defense sometimes. And, um, that's just something that Patrick Sandoval did not do, but I mean, fun pitching matchup in general. Um, I'm excited to see Grayson Rodriguez pitch as a prospect guy. Nate. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to to see can Griffin Canning keep the pitch count down. I think that was one thing that that hurt him last year is he was a hundred and five hundred six pitches deep a lot. And it seemed like it was very early, like five five innings. Maybe he got through the sixth and was able to get through a hundred, hundred and ten pitches, hundred and fifteen. I even remember a hundred and twenty, I I think it was. Uh so can he compete with the pitch count down? Um because we we got to be able to to get something out of our starting pitchers. We can't ask our bullpen to be getting six, you know, eighteen outs at every single game. It's just way too much for them. So, I'm I'm interested to see they're they're talking about Griffin Canning being this bulldog and and you know the guy who really should be taking lead of the staff. Can he do that? We'll see. I agree with you. I've been waiting to see Griffin Canning take that next step. I'm never going to be an ace, but take the next step for a while now. And he showed signs last year. So I'm really interested in seeing, especially how Patrick Sandoval performed last time out, seeing how Canning reacts not being in that in that position. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that pitching matchup overall. Grayson Rodriguez last year was not very good coming up. Came back up later in the year. It was lights out for the Orioles. And you know the, the buzz around him is future Cy Young. Let's see, let's see how he, he does tomorrow. Real quick before we head out for um for our ads, just so you know, in case we didn't talk about it before, Mike Stefanik on the IL ten days retroactive to March twenty fifth. Robert Stevenson, one of the, our big bullpen guys on fifteen day DL or IL retroactive March 25th, and they placed Sam Bachman on the 60-day injured list. That was yesterday, March 28th. And for our audio listeners, there's a word from our sponsors. All right, guys. So, hey. Also, uh, you also forgot one more guy. Jared's guy went on the IL too, 60-day IL, Kelvin Caceres, today. Yeah, he did. So oh, I didn't, I didn't, yes. They didn't have that on the uh, Angels PR so, section. Yeah, sixty day IL for Kelvin Caceres. That that is going to be a big loss for the Angels because he is he is an upper nines guy. Made his major league debut last year. Um, just more bullpen depth that's that's getting hurt. But luckily, they were able to add someone. Luckily, luckily. Okay, here we go. Um, other baseball stuff. Yesterday and today, thus far. Well, I'm gonna go with today because you mentioned you know Tyler O'Neill. So, what did y'all think about that play at second base? Mets Brewers, Reese Hoskins running into Jeff Jeff McNeil. It gets ugly. Bench is clear. Dirty? Not dirty. What do you say? Uh, are you talking to old school me or new school me? Because new school, it's it's dirty. Old school, I absolutely love it. Um. Uh, he's he's breaking up a double play. That's a that's what we were taught as kids. I, I sound old right now, but I mean that that's that's what you're taught as a baseball player in general is to break up the double play. Um, I didn't think he he might have slid a little late, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't horrible. I've seen worse slides at second base. Chase Utley, you know, there have been worse slides at second base than than that one. I'll say that. Uh, did he get a little long with it? Yeah, but I didn't think it was that bad. I Nate. thought it was very close to the Chase Utley slide, actually. Ooh, um, I don't know. It was it was very close to that. It was it was late. Um, if he slid, maybe. Luckily, McNeil caught it and went back. If McNeil had caught it clean and gone to first, I think McNeil's leg is broken. Uh, I think that's how late and and hard he slid into him. Yeah, he got spiked. He's a little pissed off about that. But I think he was more pissed off about possibly breaking his leg, and that's. That's where I found there to be a little bit of an issue. It's a legal slide, yes, um, but but is it one that you're looking to make on opening day? No, I, I don't think that's a slide you're trying to make opening day. Super late uh, and and right into the guy. Like, yeah, you're trying to break up the the double play, but that that seemed like it was so bad that 
if he didn't hold on to the bag, he was going to, to go past the bag. That's how late he was sliding and how hard he was sliding into Jeff McNeil. And it was kind of like, Eesh, we know there's some bad blood with Hoskins and, and the Mets, but that was that was kind of a, a, a late, late slide. He took I took another look at it. It, it. it was definitely a late slide. Again, taught to break up a double play, but it was it was a late slide. It's, it's he went game to the side. one of the, the it's side, game though. one of the season. You're not looking to to break some dude's leg game one of the year. That's that's tough. Like I I know you just talked about Reese the Angels Hoskins. bullpen on on day one. Like it was World Series game seven. Okay, but but we're <laughs> we're talking about a bullpen that we spent thirty eight of our forty million on compared to a a guy who's hopefully yeah. trying to play one hundred sixty two games. Just like we talk about, doesn't happen too often, but. The, the guy's trying to play as many games as possible, and you're going to go out there and, and and try and break a guy's leg in the first day of the year? That's that's tough. That's real tough. I, I, well, I agree. Well, I know, heaven forbid, I agree with Nate multiple times on the podcast, but um, <laughs> I am, actually. I, the I It was late. I, it, legal, yes. Yeah. Legal, yes. Um, But just because it's legal doesn't make it dirt. doesn't make it not dirty. Came in late, spike up on the guy's ankle. That's one. The other leg there, and I saw comments on social media. Well, he should have gotten out of the way. Do you think hmm. that's what you, you think that's what McNeil's thinking about as he's, as he's trying to get the ball out of the glove, which he didn't to first base? That's his job right there. He's not thinking. He's not thinking that Hoskins is coming in late like that. Um, by the way, Hoskins' reaction at the end, where he's at back by his bench and he's doing the whole crying tear thing, talking trash, is like. Dude, you should know better. Like, you just came back from a torn ACL. Seriously, you just came back from a torn ACL, and you're sitting here acting like you could have. You could just taken out Jeff McNeil's whole season. That that's the part that rubbed me the wrong way. Not not the slide. It's I don't think he purposely was running to Jeff McNeil. I think he just made a dumb move, didn't think it through. It's a little late. You you do got to remember that the way though with with which Reese Hoskins coming from the Phillies Phillies Mets seem to be a pretty big rivalry lately. Um, Hoskins hit that home run a couple of years ago and he took like forty seconds to round the bases. So I, know, I, I remember there's I, there's all there's already some bad blood between these teams. Like I I think players, if this happens, it was the Brewers Mets. It wasn't Mets. It wasn't no, but Mets it's, and but, the but it's Re, but it's Reese Hoskins and the Mets that have the bad blood. Right, like no matter what team he's on, the Mets don't like Reese Hoskins. Just like you could have put Chase Utley on any team, the Mets would have thrown at him. It didn't matter what team he was on. So, I, I know that there's already some bad blood. If if it was another guy, if this is Christian Yelich who makes that slide, McNeil's probably pissed, but he's not this pissed off. I think it's more so because it's Reese Hoskins that the Mets are a little bit, a little bit pissed off because, you know, once once you get that guy that you're like, man, I really don't like this guy. I think that carries a lot of weight. I'm sure Reese Hoskins did a great job of leaving some of that, but yeah, like, right? just like come that, on, man. That, that probably doesn't help both sides. I mean, like what that you could have been like it... is immediately like, listen, dude, I wasn't on purpose. I'm sorry. And eventually things will calm down. Let's, let's go ahead and just, you know, poke the bear some more. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. Any other first impressions from opening day, first couple of days, guys, Jared, I got nothing. I haven't really watched anything besides the angels. And you Angel fans, it could always be worse. Yeah. It could be the Rockies. It you could my, be the Rockies yeah. and give up 14 in For an sure. inning. So we haven't gotten there yet. It could get worse. Be happy it it's be. not that bad. It could be. Well, you know, there is one thing to mention. Um, our divisional rival, the Oakland Athletics, soon to be Las Vegas or somebody athletics, uh, Last night sold 13,000 opening day seats and nobody showed up because they were all outside protesting, demanding that John Fisher sell the team. When the game started, it was pretty much an empty stadium. Let me ask you guys a question. If you're a baseball, how do you feel about this right now? It's it's a blight for me. As a, as a baseball traditionalist, it's a blight on baseball. But what do you guys think, Jared? Um, I mean... You have a passionate fan base that, that, I mean, I wish Angels fans did it, <laughs> right? Like that would be kind of, that'd be kind of fun, huh? But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's not good for baseball for sure, but I mean, good for, good for uh, A's fans standing up. I mean, that place is 
it's been it's been a mess there for a while and i mean when you're not putting investing into the team which you can say Artie's invests in the team and you, we might not like how he does it but he invests into the team um yeah oakland yeah that's a that's a tough situation there um i'm like nate said with the rockies i'm glad we're not A's fans that would be that'd be tough they went through some very very good years like I mean you, we can all attest to that I mean that was you had to go through Oakland to win the West for a little while there for you know five maybe ten straight mm-hmm. years it was it was Angels Oakland um and, and and the Rangers you had to go through one of those three teams for a while and um but yeah that's it's not good for baseball but I mean good for good for A's fans standing up I actually think it is good for baseball, as weird as that sounds. I think I think A's fans showing up and not like not showing up shows the owner that one, you you need to be better as an owner. You need to take care of the fans, which I think is good for Major League Baseball to to realize that the owner is is putting stuff on for the fans. Like the fans are what make this thing go. The owner, like, yeah, they've got the money to make the players be on the field, but without the fans, it's very hard to make this thing go. Uh, the other thing, I, I think it, it's good because the A's don't don't spend any money. Like, it's bad for Major League Baseball that teams don't spend money. It is terrible that Oakland says, we're going to go out there with a payroll less than Shohei Otani makes. We're going to go out mm-hmm. there with a payroll less than the Dodgers spent in an afternoon. Like those kind of things aren't good for major league baseball. So I'm glad that somebody kind of stood up to, to one of the teams that isn't spending money. And like we always say, winning solves a lot of problems. If they're going to be winning, it, it changes things, but they're not winning and, and doing these things. So I think good for Oakland. Good. It, it's not a great look for major league baseball, but I think it's good for the game in general because it's going to wake up some of these really bad owners that are like, we're not going to spend any money because we, we need to, uh, I need to make way too much money instead of just make enough money where we can still compete and still win, win baseball games and put some really fun guys on the field. As for me, I, th- I think it's bad for baseball. I think anytime you have something like that going on, I think it's a bad look for baseball when ML, when MLB is basically just letting things go as they are. It's kind of like, this is, this is a athletics franchise that believe it or not, has a pretty proud history. Vida blue. Those A's teams in the 70s, the Bash brothers. I mean, there's a lot of good history there. Competed all through the 2000s with um, with crap payrolls. Uh, there's just a lot there that the, the franchise should be better represented. And by the way, those old Angels A's series, especially in the 2000s, was a, they were a lot of fun to watch as much as you know, I hate saying that that was a rivalry. It, the A's and Angels were always a rivalry to me, more than the other American League West uh, series. So, hope they suck a little while longer, but have some pride for crying out loud. Anyways, that's all I got today, guys. Anything else you want to say closing out? Jose Suarez well, should still be DFA. Fun pitching matchup on Sunday. Detmers and Tyler Wells. I'm excited to see that one as well. A couple of young, young studs there. So, but other than that, stud is loose. Looking forward to it. All right, guys. Follow us on Twitter at Talking Halos or X or whatever you want to call it. Follow Jared at Jared underscore Tim's, Nate at Green34, me at DC Apollo. We'll see you all soon. Have a great one. Mm-hmm.